Hello, my name is Cyclone it's Oz, and we're still tracking this Queensland cyclone threat. However, I'm only going to be using the word threat in this update because it's no longer really an emergency. A lot has changed overnight, and this is going to be a bit of a good news update, but don't get lulled into a false sense of security because we're still expecting a Category 3 strength severe tropical cyclone to cross the coastline between Townsville and Bowen, most likely around air, in about two to two and a half days' time. So stay around for the full 19 minutes, and I'm going to be giving you the full detailed forecast on this tropical cyclone. If you if you are brand new here, please do consider subscribing. We're getting closer to 10,000 subscribers and I'd love to hit it. So with your help, that would make it possible. And also click the join button down below to get access to some exclusive perks. Now looking at the system on the satellite imagery, this is a look at the visible satellite imagery uh, from windy.com. You can see the Australian coastline over here. It's a sp it's spinning itself up quite nicely still, but I've been saying that for the past, oh, well, probably about six or seven days at this point. It's got a defined center of circulation developing around here, just north of this Coral Sea Islands territory badge, and that's been covered by a little bit of convection at this time, but it's still a relatively broad cent uh, center of circulation. It really needs to fire a lot more thunderstorm convection over it before it will be able to be a classifiable tropical cyclone but it would have winds around 30 to 35 knots around the center you can already see um, some of the reefs around this center of circulation here picking up winds of around 25 knots probably gusting close to 40 knots here so very nasty sea conditions would be starting to develop around this tropical cyclone and down towards Hamilton Island as well there's already some pretty significant wind speeds as well 23 knots and they're only going to deteriorate from around tomorrow morning so if you do live between Cardwell and Mackay prepare for cyclone cyclone conditions and if you live between Townsville and Bowen and inland to Charters Towers, prepare for severe tropical cycling conditions. The forecast is a lot better than it was yesterday, however we're still staring down the barrel of a system that could be as strong as Cyclone Debbie upon landfall. Um, so make sure that you're getting everything in place. Your cyclone emergency kits are in place. You've got your working radio. You've got enough water to last uh, the people in your household for about three to five days, maybe a week, depending on whereabouts you live. Enough canned food as well. And if you do live in an area that's prone to flooding, say if you were flooded in Cyclone Debbie, then make sure that you're preparing for a flooding situation here by sandbagging. And you could definitely be starting your sandbags from today because the rainfall threat is the guaranteed situation from this tropical cyclone. Whether this completely busts and becomes a category one or it blows up and becomes a category four there will be a significant amount of rainfall and i'm going to get to exactly where that rainfall is expected later on in the update but we're going to start things off with the wind forecast been waffling for too long already um you can see it still has that relatively broad center of circulation as per uh, the forecast models initialization which is their first hour of forecasts still those cyclone force conditions on the northern side of the system and we're going to see how well they've done with the wind speeds over lehu reef so they've forecasted 20 22 knot wind speeds. Currently, Luhu Reef is expecting 26 knot wind speeds. And I would say that that is some pretty good congruency between what's forecast and what's actually happening. So this 34 knot cyclone conditions up here, that's very reliable at this point. And I think the Access G3 model is going to do a very good job with forecasting this tropical cyclone. And also the Icon model, um, this is, the Icon model is actually bang on in terms of wind speeds, just a one knot difference. The Access G3 model and the Icon model look like the ones that are really nailing the system right now. The GF and the Eastern Blue F are substantially, the GFS is substantially higher and the Eastern Blue F looks like it's substantially lower. So we might discard those models for just now, but we will start with the Access G3 model, which mind you is the Bureau of Meteorology's own forecast model. We're going to take this storm um, through to Wednesday morning and you can see it's a strengthening tropical cyclone really slow moving it only moves about 50 kilometers over the next 24 hours now this means it's going to have access to some of the best conditions for tropical cyclone strengthening the entire world has to offer 30 to 31 degrees Celsius sea surface temperatures sky high ocean heat content which means there's plenty of energy in the ocean to provide thunderstorm activity here it is going to be um, a situation where this tropical cyclone could rapidly intensify and in tomorrow's update we're going to take a look at Marion Reef for the um, initialization. I reckon Marion Reef will be under full-blown cyclone conditions at that point with winds probably approaching 40 knots in one or two uh, spots around that area. Now the cyclone will strengthen substantially through Wednesday, really wraps itself up nicely and by Wednesday night this is quite a menacing picture for the cyclone coming in to um, Hamilton Island and 
uh, Queensland. There will be coverage on this channel as well, so make sure you are subscribed to get your video updates. There's going to be three coming out today. Now, I do promise that um, yesterday was a bit of a bust considering I worked a 14-hour shift unexpectedly, so I do apologize for that. Um, but I'm going to be working very hard. I've got no work for the next two days, so I'm going to be working very hard to get these updates out. So yeah, you don't want to miss it. Make sure you are subscribed. We're looking at a Category 2 strength cyclone Wednesday evening, which is in line with what the Bureau of Neurology um, forecasts. But hey, if this cyclone does not form by Wednesday, morning, which is probably the absolute latest it can form for it to get to severe tropical cyclone status, then we're really look, going to be looking out for a very good situation for the Queensland coastline where they may only receive a Category 1 or a Category 2 strength impact. And I know for a lot of the viewers between Bowen and Townsville, a Category 2 strength cyclone is nothing. You guys see that every couple of years. Um, still a relatively strong system and can pack a punch in terms of maximum wind gusts and also rainfall. But really, right now, the rainfall threat is the thing that's got I'll be very concerned for the Queensland coastline. A Category 3 strength and what's probably going to be a low-end Category 3 strength tropical cyclone. It's a big deal, but it's not the absolute end of the world, whereas the amount of rainfall that's going to be coming through from this system is pretty significant. So I'm going to continue to play this run through. Now, I did say with a very high degree of confidence that the landfall time um, would be around Thursday 1pm, and I said that yesterday, and I'm now going to revise that and say Thursday evening, maybe even into early Friday morning, we're going to see landfall. The cyclone will be strengthening right up to landfall. You can see it is still getting stronger by Thursday and it becomes a Category 3 strength severe tropical cyclone at around 5 p.m. local time before it crosses the coast just outside of air. In fact, that's basically right on air on Home Hill basically at, uh, what's that, 10 p.m. local time. So it's about eight hours later than what I said yesterday, which, I mean... I did try my best to give a good prediction yesterday, but it does look like things have changed. The cyclone has actually, or the tropical low has actually moved a little bit further east than what we were expecting, so it has pulled away from the Queensland coastline, which is bad news in the sense that it can um, make the most of the conditions just offshore from uh, the Great Barrier Reef and the Queensland coastline. But again, it's weakened a little bit actually in terms of wind speed, so it's not it's not doing very good. This tropical low, it's got some of the best conditions in the world, and it's really fumbling them right now. But yeah, making landfalls. A category three strength tropical cyclone on Thursday evening before moving inland to Charters Towers remains a category two strength tropical cyclone as it passes over Ravenswood just south of Charters Towers um, on Australia Day. And then as we get into Friday afternoon, it really weakens off and conditions start to ease off for Townsville Air, um, Bowen, and even down towards Hamilton Island and Prospun. But they will still be getting some pretty significant amounts of rain um, until maybe Friday evening. I do believe that. Uh, there'll be a lot of this onshore flow here um, from the tropical Pacific Ocean. That could be bringing some pretty heavy thunder showers as well. And also a lot of rainfall down on the mountains just outside of Mackay, which I've once again forgotten the names of. So uh, I'll try and remember that sometime in this video. Um, then by around Friday and Saturday, it starts to move closer to the Queensland coastline once again over Mount Cool and then down towards Glendon and north of uh, Moranbar. Um, and then it heads towards sort of Mackay. It still looks like it might be a tropical cyclone at this point, but I've never seen a tropical cyclone manage to survive over mountainous terrain, well not mountainous terrain, but very hilly terrain overland for more than uh, 24 hours. So I really doubt that this is going to come to fruition because this is a very powerful tropical low, that's for sure. But it still could remain as significantly or decently strong. It could still have damaging wind gusts as it moves over land and over Emerald and down towards um, the southeastern Queensland area. Now the storm does look like it completely misses the Brisbane and Gold Coast and the Sunshine Coast. Um, um, areas. So that's a bit of good news indeed, considering we were expecting a lot of rainfall down there. But I'm also seeing this sort of onshore flow here, which generally brings those very heavy showers that everyone down in the Gold Coast either knows and they either love them or they hate them. Uh, but a lot of heavy showers are expected uh, to move through Brisbane and the Gold Coast on around uh, Monday and Tuesday into early next week. And they could be delivering some pretty significant rainfall totals. And they could also be delivering some gusty winds. This, this storm uh, really dies off and kind of just waddles into New South Wales. Yeah, that's a very pitiful and very weak tropical low at that point moving into New South Wales. But still, there could be a substantial amount of rainfall around Brisbane and the Gold Coast. And that's been a very consistent trend on this forecast for the past couple of days, which means I can now say with a very high degree of certainty that there will be places south of Bundaberg down towards Coffs Harbour and Lismore. Um, there will be isolated pockets that pick up in excess of, I would say, six to 700 millimetres at this time. So very heavy rainfall is expected through there. Now, just before I jump in to the rainfall forecast, I will briefly talk about how to prepare adequately for a situation like this. Make sure that you've got your cyclone emergency kits in place. I've already said that before. If you live in a flood prone area, make sure you're sandbagging 
Make sure you've got enough canned food um, as well to last uh, each person in your household for a good amount of time, probably three to four days as well um, at most. And also make sure you've got about five liters of water per person per day. So if you've got five people in your household and you're expecting to be stuck inside for five days, get 125 liters of water or thereabouts. And then you probably want a little bit more for showering and bathing as well. So you could probably have a safe bet on about 250 to 300 liters of water, but be really conservative with what water uh, you use in those sort yeah, for cooking and showering um, per se, but don't be conservative with what water you drink. Drinking water is so important in a very humid and tr muggy and tropical situation like this. Uh, so don't be skimpy on how much water you do drink. Make sure you've got that generator, which uh, has enough fuel to power that esky full of beers because you're gonna need them in a situation like this. Imagine being cut off from the world for about three or four days. You're gonna need a probably a six pack a day at this rate um, for a couple of days. So make sure you're stocked up on that sense as well, but don't get too pissed because it is a tropical cyclone. I said that yesterday and you guys loved it. So thank you so much uh, for the feedback on that video. But let's take a look at the rainfall forecast right now. Well, we'll take a look at rainfall right now, considering I've been drumming that, uh, that up as the big threat from this system. So by Wednesday evening, you're going to be seeing these gusty outer bands of this tropical cyclone approach the coastline around Hamilton Island down towards Mackay. Um, these will have some very strong winds in them and also some very isolated patches of heavy rainfall, but they don't really get too bad until about Thursday midday when the tropical cyclone is really approaching landfall. Now these bands will definitely have cyclone conditions in them, powerful cyclone conditions, wind gusts, probably of category two or three proportions at this point, and they'll be really delivering quite a nasty blow towards Proserpine and Mackay, Hamilton Island and up towards Bowen. Then the rainfall really does start to pick up around Eyre and Townsville by around Thursday early afternoon into early evening as this tropical cyclone makes its final approach and you can see torrential rainfall expected around the core. I've been saying through to 400 millimeters over a six hour period and I'm sticking with that number. As the storm makes landfall, there'll be some very heavy rainfall around the landfall site, but there'll be very consistent and also moderate to heavy rainfall south of the cyclone as well. So don't be fooled, even though you're not under a cyclone uh, warning, you might still be receiving cyclone conditions in the form of very heavy rainfall, torrential rainfall from the outer bands of this tropical cyclone. But I think the Bureau of Meteorology have <laughs> really crafted a reputation for overwarning these sorts of systems. We've got that cyclone watch extending from Cairns down towards St. Lawrence. I believe St. Lawrence is south of Mackay. It's really quite south. It is um, very, very far south. And I mean, putting Cairns under a cyclone watch at this point is a little bit extreme, I reckon. I don't think Cairns itself is under a cyclone watch, but communities south of it, I think, are. And I think that's a little bit extreme because I find it very hard to believe that Innisfail, Tully, or even Cardwell will receive cyclone conditions from this storm. Um, um, and maybe even Ingham. Ingham might even completely miss cyclone conditions from this tropical cyclone. We're really honing in right now on Townsville, Air, Bowen, down towards Proserpine and Hamilton Island for these full-blown cyclone conditions. So yeah, a lot of rainfall expected, especially as this moves inland across Australia Day. You're expecting a very wet day around Charters Towers, Ravenswood into Shuandon down towards Stamford and Matabara as well. Very heavy rainfall is expected from this uh, tropical low. Could still be a tropical cyclone at this point. And the heavy rainfall on the Mackay Mountains here, or the Mackay high hills outside of Proserpine, they, that will be lasting right in towards Saturday and Sunday. So it's going to be a very, very wet couple of days there. Um, and this is when we're going to see some very big rainfall accumulations with some places possibly seeing up to a thousand millimeters of rainfall. And this is where we really start to see that major uh, flood levels and maybe even catastrophic flooding in one or two locations. So there are flood watches and warnings out in place there. Make sure you're taking them very seriously if you live in an area that's prone to flooding. And um, really drawing comparisons from Cyclone Debbie if you were flooded in Cyclone Debbie from the rainfall or even from storm surge, prepare for flooding from Cyclone or what will be Cyclone Kiralee. I mean, uh, far out. We thought it would be named yesterday, but it's not even named right now. So she's really doing a bad job of intensifying into a tropical cyclone. But nonetheless, if you are in a flood prone area, prepare now. Sandbags are imperative. They could save your home from significant flooding. Evacuate belongings to either a second story if you don't have it. Get them to another house that's safe. Uh, because you don't want to be losing everything. I know if you've got it covered under insurance, then it's not the end of the world, but it's still a really big deal when you've got to replace everything. And yeah, just make sure that you're playing it really safe. And if it is flooded, forget it. Don't cross flooded roads because you'll just become a statistic from this tropical cyclone and no one wants to see that. Now we'll take a look at rainfall accumulation over the next 10 days. A lot of rainfall is expected. Actually, we can flick it back to the next five days because I think the bulk of it is going to happen over the next five days. Around the landfall site, three to 400 millimeters 
meters inland uh, where the more hilly terrain is, where this tropical low will be moving slower outside of Charters Towers and Ravenswood, you're looking at four to 450 millimeters. That's trended significantly up from yesterday. And then inland when this cyclone does make its turn, you're looking at places picking up closer to 900 millimeters. I wouldn't be putting all the money in the world on this scenario happening where you're seeing these inland areas pick up essentially a year's worth of rainfall. However, still around Torrens Creek, uh, you could be seeing rainfall totals pick up up to around 400 millimeters and that will definitely be pushing rivers beyond their moderate to major flooding alerts especially in areas that are substantially drier than the um, coastline where they only see up to a thousand millimeters a year and i use the term only very loosely but when you're staring down the barrel of a thousand millimeters falling in effectively a week then that is a lot of rainfall but of course i guess all of you have already noticed the elephant in the room around proserpine you're looking at five to six hundred millimeters and then down towards yalbaru and halliday bay 1200 millimeters ridiculous rainfall accumulations through here on some of these mountains and totally plausible as well considering the storm is going to just be pushing this tremendous amount of cloud banding um what we call inflow bands ashore, you're just gonna be picking up rain, uh, rain showers after rain showers after rain showers. And these rain showers will be heavy uh, falls, they will, they will be long lasting, very heavy falls. Um, and you will be picking up rainfall accumulations in one or two locations up to a thousand millimeters or even beyond. Um, in a very similar fashion to how Cyclone Debbie dumped her rainfall, it's just gonna be these constant rain bands that will last for days so very, very heavy rainfall is expected, and I would not be surprised if, um, what, what's her name, Curly becomes a cyclone that is comparably, uh, comparatively wet to Cyclone Jasper. And by comparatively, I mean getting about half the amount of rainfall that Jasper got, because Jasper's rainfall uh, was absolutely ludicrous, but significant to major river flooding is expected outside of Mackay, down towards West Hill and Ogmore, um, and inland towards uh, more and by and even towards emerald as well a lot of rainfall is expected and as we flick this over to the 10 day forecast you can also see a lot of rainfall expected on the sunshine coast and the gold coast as well three to four hundred millimeters in one or two places down towards the gold coast and the scenic rim maybe four to five hundred millimeters as well um yeah around byron bay or tweed heads you're looking at up to four to five hundred millimeters as well so a very big amount of rainfall is expected down here and because it's been very very consistent between forecast models and um over the past couple of days as well um, or actually it's not no longer consistent between the forecast models I just switched it over to the Eastern Bliff and the GFS respectively then um, but it is a possible scenario and we're, it's not going to be until about next weekend that we actually get a full understanding on what rainfall is expected from this tropical low as it moves down here but right now I will be expecting some pretty substantial rainfall accumulations to occur um, as this tropical low moves through and even into uh, inland communities um, on the Queensland New South Wales border three to four hundred millimeters as well um, I know these are more remote farming communities but they could definitely be doing with the rainfall to kick off a great 2024 cropping season um, but yes yeah, some really significant rainfall is expected out here as well and I mean being the start of the Murray Darling River basement uh, catchment I believe that they could also be seeing some pretty substantial uh, flows down in towards the Murray that could last or maybe a couple of weeks as well so very substantial rainfall expected down here as well and that could be causing some minor to moderate flooding too so make sure you're just staying up to date and also staying as safe as possible now i will take a look very briefly at another at another couple of scenarios from this tropical cyclones landfall uh first of all the icon forecast model on the wind speeds because the icon is probably one of the more intense or stronger um, models um on its landfall it actually makes landfall on friday so on australia day between air and bonds the landfall is trended about 20 kilometers further south or I guess further east at this point, southeast. And it's also trended about 12 hours later. Now, do I totally um, put my money behind this? Not 100%. It's a pretty good scenario for the cyclone considering it will have an extra 12 hours over water to intensify. So it could get a little bit uglier for air and bond where they will be seeing probably a higher end category three strength tropical cyclone uh, across the coast. But again, I wouldn't be putting all my money on this situation. The Icon model is a reliable model, but it's not as reliable as the Access G3 or the ECM Relief Forecast model per se. Um, and speaking of those models, these are the ones that really are confusing me. The ECM Relief might actually end up being right. But just looking at the structure of this tropical cyclone on their wind speeds, you can see just how like jagged the wind field is on this um, and the eye-like feature, just how jagged it is. Um, that's very confusing and very strange to see in a tropical cyclone. I don't think the Eastern Relief is thinking that this is going to be a tropical cyclone. The Eastern Relief is probably thinking that this is just gonna be a bunch of messy storms. And to be honest, that's the preferred scenario at this point. However, once again, the rainfall threat is the most significant one. So 
for a best case scenario, you'd want the rainfall threat to completely dissipate, but it doesn't look like that is going to happen at this point. And the GFS model has completely killed this system off. I mean, this is barely a category one strength tropical cyclone at this point. And the GF GFS at one point was calling for a category five. Um, so this is a very interesting forecast and the landfall right on top of Bowen as well. However, I'm gonna say, considering the GFS hasn't actually initialized the tropical uh, low very well, that this is a relatively unlikely scenario to actually happen but again we don't really know a hundred percent so I'm we're gonna have to wait on this one and actually see there's still a chance this system and I use this term lightly and very loosely but there's still that chance this system completely busts and we only see the passage of a category one strength cyclone so we're we'll watching out for that but Again, um, it's an interesting scenario to watch, that's for sure. But anyway, that's all that I have time for. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. I appreciate the support so much. If you are brand new here, please do consider subscribing. It really does help us out. Um, and also, if you want to, uh, leave a like on the video while you're at it. And I'd love to give a special shout out to Alexa, Farid, Alicia, and Dave for being our channel sponsors for this month. Thank you so much for your support. And if you too want to get your name mentioned at this part of the video, then please do consider hitting the join button down below. It's $4.99 Australian a month. And it's a little bit of support, but it goes a long way to support better software and better uh, gear for this channel and I thank you so much for your support and I do apologize for the lack of videos yesterday I know I promised a, um, a bunch to come out but combined with software crashes and a 14 hour shift I really struggled to get everything out and I'm also planning a holiday with my girlfriend so I'm really flat out at this time but I'm doing my best with this cyclone and I promise I'll be giving you the updates along this channel and on the Force 13AU channel so thank you so much for having me as your weatherman and I'll catch you all in the next storm bye bye